Well, with the Empowered Light Holistic Expo. Our next expo is planned for May 1st through 3rd, 2020 at the Greater Philadelphia Expo Center in Oaks, which is outside of Philadelphia. Hope you can make it. Hope we all can make it. I'm here today with Amy Gillespie. Hey, Amy, how are you? Hi, so good. Excellent. Amy is going to be uh, doing a talk Saturday at 4 p.m., uh, Saturday, May 2nd, in the Awaken Room. And Amy is an iridologist, and she focuses on the ancestral patterns in our eyes. Can you explain a little bit more about what your talk will be like, Amy? Please, I'd love to. So I don't cover any health. So if you're looking to talk uh, or listen about iridology or whatnot, there, there will be other iridologists at the expo. But I'm going to be talking about ancestral patterns, how they show up in the eyes, and even how sometimes our ancestors' images, literally like photographs of them, will show up in the eyes. And with each reading, I take a photograph that you um, receive, and we actually transfer it to your cell phone before you walk away. So you've got that magnificent picture before you ever... Um, walk out of the show. And I'm going to introduce you to your ancestors, your gifts, their traumas, um, kind of the whole world of you and your ancestors and how that shows up in your eyes. So basically, this is like a past life um, reading in a way that basically those traumas or those touch points, as you said, show up as patterns, uh, you can see an image of a person, an angel, whatever it might be in someone's eye. And what you do is expand their eye and, and examine it, and then you can kind of give them a reading based on what you see. We Very do. much so. Yeah. So if you look to any unusual experiences you've had in your life, like um, being locked in and screaming to be let out, or where people aren't listening to you and you just want to scream, you're not listening to me. You're at a touch point with your ancestors' time of them screaming or wanting to scream, you're not listening to me. And those things imprint in our eyes. So we have this opportunity to look at them and then choose what we want to do with that pattern going forward. So we're not in this trauma and drama over and over again. Excellent. I always tell people that when they have um, a physical or emotional issue, it's often a past life trauma that hasn't been healed or recognized. In other words, uh, for example, I have a left knee issue and my left knee is sad, but throughout past lives that left knee has been um, traumatized. And of course, I didn't consciously know about that. But now that I consciously know about it, I can work to release the trauma and heal the need. Is that kind of what your goal would be for someone that's getting their eyes read by you? Very much so. So um, right now, as you know, everyone's going through this, this coronavirus um, frenzy, the, the lack of information, the stores being closed, things not being available. And that is a great example of an ancestral touch point where perhaps our ancestor in World War II or World War I couldn't buy coffee, couldn't get medicine, couldn't get married, couldn't graduate from high school or college had a lack of information, and we're back at a touch point having a similar dynamic. Now our stores are out of toilet paper, right? <laughs> Their stores were out of coffee or yeah. something else that yeah. they really need or felt they needed. And so this is really ancestral touch points. And we're going to talk about that um, during my workshop and even maybe do an exercise trying to find at least one touch point for each person where they're at something that happened to their ancestors and now they are in a situation of, of finding a new way to engage that pattern, recognizing it for what it is. It's very interesting. I remember my grandmothers and my mother worrying about coffee and sugar, like, like incessantly way back when, like probably in the seventies. And I was like, who cares about coffee? You know, I was a kid, <laughs> but you're right. right? You're all going to do that now. It's very interesting. Now, now, Amy. Yeah, and it happens quite often. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. We have a, a little buffering with this video going on right now. So it's a little bit of lag time. Um, my okay, question, go right ahead. 
My question was, you're going to be at the expo the entire weekend. You'll have a vendor booth there. And so you'll be doing readings for people on an individual basis. Can you kind of explain the process that somebody will go through there and what, the, what they might even discover throughout the process? Terrific, yes. So what will happen is I'm going to take a up close macro photograph of their eyes. So they'll get to see their eyes up close and personal. I'm going to transfer that picture onto their cell phone or smart device so they'll have the picture when they walk away. I'm going to give them about a 10 minute sneak peek of things we're seeing in their eyes, including ancestral images. So there will be like looking at their gifts, talents, abilities. If their ancestors had issues with religious oppression or their parents' experience of their pregnancy with them. Um, we're gonna look at a couple different aspects of what they have going on in their lives. And then they'll have two choices for a reading. One is a dedicated video reading where I come home and make a 35 to 45 minute video of them, their eyes and their ancestors going around their eyes and pointing everything out. Or there's also what's called my iMag. And this is a 36 page PDF download report that they can get of them, their eyes and their ancestors, where it's their eye photos, they're the cover, they're the centerfold, um, and they can make that choice at the show. So both are digital deliveries, both come after the show, but before they walk away from my booth, they'll already have seen their eyes and had a nice sneak peek of what's in there right, before right. they walk off. Excellent. So um, it sounds like a very unique service that you offer. What are some of maybe the stories you can um, tell us about what you've seen in people's eyes? Do you have any great stories about that? Yeah, probably a few. So um, I had a gal at the last, at the actually at a very recent show, she came to a show again later to see me because she hadn't booked a reading at the first one. And she said, Amy, I went home after you told me that there was some trauma in my life prior to age two or three, I went home and I asked my mom and my mom said, well, when you were one year old, your brother was running with you in his arms and he fell and um, it knocked you out and you were at your grandma's and they tried to get you back and um, they couldn't wake you up and they drove you to the hospital 10 minutes. You still had not come to. Wow. And um, so they got her to the hospital and the nurse finally revived her, got her, got her back. She had never heard the story, never knew anything about the story. And she said, you know, the funny thing, Amy, is the last thing you said was nobody gets away with dropping the baby. And, and she went home and found out that she had been dropped, knocked out cold. And the marking was in her eye for a trauma with a woman. And I told her it's, it's, you know, either it was involving a woman or the first person you saw after was a woman. And that's what it was. The nurse was the one who revived her. And so when she came to, um, it was a woman right there. And so it imprinted on her left eye. Well, that's very interesting. Very cool. Very cool. How did you get started with this? I'd like to, uh, it's just such a unique thing. Well, I was in Africa doing survival skills training for kids. And when I came back to the US, I wanted to do survival skills training for kids here in, the, in America. And I felt that the thing that was threatening kids the most was um, self-destructive behaviors and suicide patterns. And um, so I studied with a number of people and came across this eye reading thing. But all the way through, I kept thinking there's something more, something's missing, something's more. I mean, how can we have markings in sibling trauma with sisters when we don't have any sisters? Or when we're the oldest child, we don't have any sisters yet. And so do, do our eyes change every time we get a new sibling? And then if a sibling dies, does it change? Um, but it was our ancestors issue with siblings, our ancestors issue with sisters. And so now if we're born and we don't have sisters, it may be classmates in school. It may be those other girls in choir or um, in the cheerleading team, right? It'll show up in a sister role, but it'll repeat the dynamics of what happened to our ancestors, just like you talked about your grandma and mom being worried about coffee and sugar. It'll show up in our world as toilet paper. Right. right. <laughs> the modern thing you cannot be without. <laughs> so That's it sounds right. like you just... That's right. 
you, you wanted to help children, you learned about this, and then you just, it kind of maybe morphed a little bit for you? It did. I was working in Colorado with Boys and Girls Club and with social workers, and um, especially regarding self-destructive patterns. And an interesting story actually from the Philly Expo last year, mm -hmm. I had a gentleman who was a retired Navy Admiral and I was explaining this to him and I was explaining how oftentimes children who have military parents where the conception happened like during a military furlough or right before the dad was, was sent out on active duty, a lot of times they grew up with some real self-esteem issues because there was this fear in the parents in the, in the beginning of, oh my gosh, what if I'm not there? What if she's pregnant? What if we're having a baby? What if I'm not alive? All this question, and it imprints on the fetus as a feeling of not being wanted. And so the child, their whole life just can't hear, I love you. You can say it and say it, but their intuition says, yeah, but there's something you're not telling me. Or yeah, or just flat, no, no you don't. You don't love me. You never loved me. You didn't <laughs> right. want me. Right. And, and yeah, and this man, I mean, he's retired Navy Admiral and the tears were running down his face as he said, Amy, our son committed suicide. Oh. This conversation never, ever came up. And he says, I know, he said, every cell in my body knows that that's exactly what was happening. And you just explained it in four minutes. Yeah. And he said, we never got there in therapy. It just never came up. He said, as soon as you said it, I absolutely knew this is what happened. And so that has been a really big part of my work and continues to be, is to help people understand where those blockages happen, especially between parent and child, where there's some unspoken stories in the background that nobody's heard, nobody knows about, like the baby being dropped. And, and the child just, their intuition keeps saying, there's something else, there's something else, there's something else. And they can't figure it out. And thankfully, the, the eyes give us a map. They give us a treasure map to that information. So that that's is, a big part of it. That's a fabulous story. And you must feel so proud and excited that you were able to help them on, with, with one level of understanding. Although, you know, you couldn't prevent the incident because, um, you know, of a timing thing. But now they have a little bit more closure, a little bit more understanding of what happened. Very interesting. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where um, irogenics and my work is, is continuing to blossom out is I realize I can't reach enough people. And right. so as I move forward, you'll see when I come to the shows like the, the Empowered Light Holistic Expo, that I'm actually starting to look for people who want to do this work so that it can get to more people more quickly. And so I will be, um, also offering if there are people who are interested in learning how to train on this that there will be online training classes coming up oh that's really exciting to know so somebody could learn what you yeah. do and they could like you could expand yes. so you could uh, maybe have multiple expos done at the same time absolutely right. and they'll actually be their own person doing their own work right. um I'm not hanging on to that. I'll be hanging on to the, the print reports, the my iMags, but they'll be running their own thing. Okay. I just will be training them and be Excellent. there for support. So Excellent. yeah, it's, it's a good thing, especially as it gets further north, since I'm in Virginia, up towards New Jersey, New York, that area, I can't turn shows down fast enough. I mean, it just, I've got a lot of people wanting readings and I just can't get there. So yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. It is. I like the way you're, you're working because you take the picture, you give them a little snippet of information, but really you're doing the bulk of your work on the back end so you can um, see more people during the expo. So everybody gets like a mini reading, they get a little bit of what, you, what they need, and then they get a, a deeper reading down the road. I like that. Right. And I think everyone knows these shows can have some pretty wild energy. <laughs> and so, you know, to try to, do the full, to try to do the full reading is a little distracting. You're yeah, like, yeah, oh my yeah. gosh, I'm, I'm going to miss half of, I'm going to miss half of what I want them to know. And, and I want to make that connection for them to as right. many ancestral images in their eyes as I possibly can. Right. And then the video is theirs forever. And so is the mag. So then Excellent. they have that connection point forever. Yeah. Excellent. And now you've written a couple of books. Can you show us them and like explain what's in the books? And you'll, yeah, I can do you'll, that. you'll have these at the expo? Yes. Right. So this um, book is actually 
kind of uh, autobiographical. This is six years in Mozambique, things I haven't told mom. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of the synchronized divine connections that dumped my butt into Mozambique, Africa um, by way of a bankruptcy and a few other life tragedies. So everybody can um, get a look at how something completely disastrous can turn into a huge change in their lives. And the other is The Lost Scribe, and um, The Lost Scribe is the, um, the forgotten channel of the ancients, and this is the first of a, a fiction series all about Maddie Claire Owens and her adventures. And this one actually relates to my experiences working in Guatemala, doing survival skills with kids. Um, but there's also a very lengthy channeled message I took from Melchizedek in here about the workings of the universe. And so um, this is the first of a series, but this fall I'm going to be putting out a book, Meaningful Moments, which is all about these touch points with our ancestors and how to recognize them and how they happen and how to not engage the beast anymore. Excellent. So, so if somebody wanted to get your book like right now, are they online or would they go to your website or where would they get them? They can do either. So they're on my website, they're on Kindle, um, Barnes and Noble, and I believe Nook. Um, so I think they can get them most, most of the sources, um, either online as a digital or in a paper copy as well. So I hear people have some time to read right now. <laughs> True that. What I'm finding is the more I talk to Amy, you have been a world traveler. You've done very unique things, but like you probably said in your first book, everything has led to this point. It's, it's kind of developed who you are and what you're doing now with your career. Very interesting. And that's very um, helpful to people because a lot of times people have these experiences which we'll call bad or negative and they don't realize it's the next step to the, the good thing that's going to happen with them. Like just right now we're going through a crisis in a global crisis and if we can make it through, it might actually turn out to be a good thing. You know? We don't know. Yeah, there will be some good things. Yeah, there will be some good things that come from this. And, and that's very true. I um, uh, experienced, I'm adopted. So that's what makes my eye reading even more interesting because I've met my genetic family and I've met, of course, grown up with my adopted family. And now it's like a weekly occurrence that, some crazy thing from my birth father's life and mine are so parallel. It's, it's out of control. He did biometrics with irises in the sixties. Ooh. Wow. Who did biometrics? There weren't even computers in the sixties. NASA just got a computer in the sixties, right? Mm -hmm. um, my birth mother and I had the same job for the same company, probably sat at the same desk when we wow. were each 18 years old. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Unknown to each other. That's crazy. And I could go on, I could go on all day. And so that for me, when people come and they're like, well, I'm adopted, I don't know. And I'm like, you don't have to. <laughs> if you've had this weird experience, they had it. And let me just show you back how we can get to that. Because it's really true, those patterns repeat and repeat. We just bought, my fiance and I just bought a, um, a Huntley farm. My family's castle in Scotland was a Huntley Castle. Wow. So many interesting inspirations just, did you have. Yeah. Yeah, you just, like you said, some of the worst, worst times of your life can turn into something that is a building block. And especially in the eyes, there's a mark in a place called inner truth, which is when your most horrific experience was meant to be part of who you came to become. And it's not an easy discussion. Um, you look at like David Pelzer, A Boy Called It, right? Where you go through a really traumatic, difficult childhood, but millions of people are helped because he went through that and came to the part of writing about it. Right. And so um, even though there are, you know, really some traumatic and terrible times, they're always part of the story and is what we do with that story. That's what it always is, is what are we doing with our story? Where are we taking it? 
it's really inspirational to hear what you're, you know, like there's things I haven't known about you that you just talked about. So for the person that's watching this video, they're like, well, yeah, I might like to have that done. But the more they listen, the more inspiration and the more ideas they might have. Oh, I'm adopted or whatever. When you talked about the Admiral, mm -hmm. I totally um, got chills. So you were right on with that message and you really helped him. So this could be a, a great service that you're offering people for just a deeper understanding of them and their lives and you know how to heal or move forward on some things or what to even expect. Yeah, it's yeah. true. I just did a reading in um, Savannah, Savannah, Georgia. And um, the girl, it, it, it wound up being a, a, a pro bono reading for, for whatever reason. She just came up and I just had that feeling that I was being told, you need to read this girl. And, and we were in there and there was an image in her eye and, and she was like, oh my gosh, it's my grandma. I mean, it's my grandma. There was no missing this woman. She had this hair and this necklace and there was no missing her. And, um, and she said, well, I think I was meant to come here because I've been so suicidal oh. and I've been wanting to take my life for the last month or so. And I was like, you know, your grandma is saying they need you to come through this, to be that person on the other side of this, because you're going to reach people that would not be reached if, if it wasn't from someone who'd been in the right. same place. Right. So, I mean, you know, there's just some times when we come through some really terrible, terrible things that are just meant to be part of our inspiration. And it doesn't make it any easier to ride that ride. But sometimes just knowing that if we can just take two more steps forward, two more steps forward, we can get to the other side. And then we can know that there was something big we were meant to bring. What a great support you offered that woman. I'm so glad you did that. You know, I, I actually yeah, had I was just similar and it, it's like you don't know at the time you're just doing what you're told so i'm so glad you did that yeah yeah and i it seems like at every show there's somebody who winds up being that person and and she had said when she came up she's like oh, i can't really afford this and i was like i don't know come on up let's look <laughs> i was like come on and let's just take a look at those eyes and see what's in there and and um and with so much you know and it was like well let's just you know i i had a line the whole day and in this one moment there was like a three minute opening and I was like, come on up, let's, let's take Excellent. a look here. Evidently, this is meant to be. So, yeah, Very that great part's, that part's the fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. So you've got some great stories. Part. Yeah. So, I know, uh, right? Right? Yeah. yeah. So, so Amy will be talking Saturday, May 2nd, 4 o'clock in the Awaken Room. And she'll be kind of giving you an idea of what the ancestral eye reading can, can bring for you. Uh, and what it is, and then she will be at the expo all weekend doing readings. So you can go get the photograph done, get a little mini snippet, and then choose what option works for you, and hear some of her amazing stories. And probably you'll have some of your own amazing yeah. stories. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and, and I'll um, I'll be showing some slides. Oh, good. So people can see examples also of how ancestors show up in the eyes and and um, be able to just go home and look at their own eye photos and see what's in there. That's always an amazing experience. People will say to me all the time, oh my gosh, there's like 30 people in my eye. And, um, and I was like, which part didn't you believe when I told you that to start with? <laughs> which part didn't you? They're like, well, I didn't think me. I'm like, oh yeah, everybody, everybody has at least 20 to 200 images in their eyes. And um, so we'll be looking at that when I do the slides at my talk at the Empowered Light. Let me ask a question. Let's say you heal a trauma. Please. You've got a trauma that shows up in your eye. You do the reading, the person somehow works through the trauma or whatever. Let's say you did the same person a year later. Is that image still in their eye? Well, there's the $64,000 question. Hey? Yeah. It's a great question. Yeah. Yeah. My experience so far has been um, so first off, yes, there are definitely lots of ancestral images in our eyes. I've seen, I've taken pictures of Blarney Castle, of two men racing horses neck and neck, of a woman delivering a baby. Yeah. French Legionnaire, I think I took that one in Philadelphia. And um, so, yes, the images are there. And what I find is the images that tend to float on the surface a bit, they will change with each time you take photos. The images that are more in the fibers of the eyes, they tend to be there all the time. Mm 
Okay. And people will say, well, what are they? Why are they there? And I'll say, well, you know, either it's something that's happening to you. And it's like, they're saying, we're with you. We've been through this. It wasn't toilet paper for us. It was sugar. It wasn't, you know, I couldn't graduate from high school. It was, I couldn't get confirmed at church, whatever the case is. Right. Um, it's like, they're saying we're with you. Your story is our story. But also I find that when somebody heals something, whether that image goes out or not, it's like all of a sudden around people, everybody starts shifting. All of a sudden people who haven't talked to you in like five years suddenly show up and are like, so how are you? I think of you so often. And you're like, who are you? What happened to that person who was so mean and nasty or competitive or snippy or whatever? I can't explain it, but just about everyone who's had an eye reading comes back and later on they're like, oh my gosh, I just can't believe my dad is talking to me. He hasn't talked to me since I was a kid. Like not like let's talk. And so it seems like if you go up and you catch that first ancestor in the 1600s or 1500s or 1700s, it's like, it just trickles down. It's like all of a sudden everything starts shifting. So, um, and I get a lot of people who have long ago kind of esoteric training, the old school Sith or Viking or Samurai or Druid or Druze. And there's always some kind of images of that going on in the eyes, which is fascinating. It is very interesting. It is very interesting. And I think you answered one of my next questions. So it's like you're going back, if you can catch that, let's call it the first ancestor, and you, you heal that trauma there, it kind of has a ripple forward effect on subsequent yeah, fabulous mm -hmm. yeah. yeah 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 it's um and you can't you can't make a direct link you can't say i had an ad eye reading on tuesday and then next month my brother who hasn't talked to me since junior high talked to me you can't really link it yeah. but it's really amazing very um, and also missing ancestors will show up where there's missing family members they're usually from behind where you'll see the back of someone's head or the back of people, that's where there's somebody missing. Somebody's father isn't who we think it is, or somebody was a foundling in a bus or a train station yeah. or an orphanage, but somebody's out of place, somebody's missing, and that's always cool. That is interesting. Uh, I, you know, my grandfather was an orphan, and um, mm. it's it said that he was the illegitimate son of a wealthy person in a certain city, and um, you know, you would know the family name if I said it. And um, I've always been curious about that because of course he, he had a foster mother who was abusive and it was like poverty, life, blah, 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 which of course trickled down to my father and probably me. <laughs> I wonder if that's I can there. start drawing your eyes, right? What's that? Right yeah. now I can start drawing them. 12 o'clock yeah. right eye. Um, about out here at about 4.30 on the left eye for that, for that uh, stepmother. Yeah. 12 o'clock for that missing identity and jealousy. Yeah. I, I had a girl recently who um, had this big brown spot um, in, in altruism, giving away too much for free in the right yeah. eye. And, um, and it was her father placing her for adoption. And I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, he didn't want to do it. And she said, you know what? She said, my adopted mom did tell me that. She told me that my birth father never wanted to give me up. And I was like, that is like the biggest mark in your eye is that he wow. did not want you given away. Yeah. And um, she was young enough. And I told her, I said, you, you should really go run your DNA test. You should really go see if you can't, because if he runs his DNA and she runs hers, they're gonna, you know what I mean? They've got that potential to be emailing each other because they're related. Oh. I said, I just have a feeling you're going to find this guy. I think he's looking for you. So you just, you never know what's going to be in there. It's and what healing that, what healing that will bring them. And, um, you know, you never know where all that's going to lead. So it's very exciting. So what you do is so yeah. super interesting and so important. Thank you. So, so Amy will be talking Saturday, May 2nd, and she'll be at the expo all weekend and you can speak with her in person, get your reading done and um, ask her more questions if, if we haven't answered some of those. Hopefully we've at least piqued your interest. <laughs> yeah, right. it's fascinating. It's, and eyes are beautiful. They're just beautiful. Yeah. And you know, um, when I look in my own eyes, I see the universe there. You know, it's like 
when you really focus in, focus in, it's the universe. And it's so interesting. It is. Yeah. There's a whole world in there. Like you say, there's a whole universe in there. And I don't care who thinks they have boring eyes. Nobody does. Everybody has eyes that tell an entire story. That's a whole treasure map in there. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thanks so much, Amy. And for those watching, make sure you go stop by Amy's booth and, of course, her talk Saturday at 4 o'clock. Thanks so much, Amy. Perfect. Thank you so much, Sue. It's been great to connect again. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.